Ciao everyone. Welcome to Recording and Production Techniques. My name is Matteo Marciano. I'm a professor of practice of music technology here at NYU Abu Dhabi. And today I want to give you an introduction of our beautiful recording facility. I've decided to make this video for students enrolled in recording and production techniques here at NYU Abu Dhabi, as well as students enrolled in mixing and mastering, and as well for students and people that have interest in understanding how Signal works in an analog-based recording studio. With this series of tutorial, we're going to dive in into signal flow, signal flow through patch bay, microphones, different microphone techniques, and as well as how to produce a song. Today I want to talk to you about Studio A. Studio A here at NY Abu Dhabi, it's an enormous facility that we use for students to practice and craft the art of recording and audio engineering. Over here I have an analog console and it's very important for you to understand that this console is a sort of like hybrid console. So we're going to be dealing with constantly with signal that floats between the digital relay and the analog relay. So it's crucial for us to understand how these two worlds work in order to make the best out of our system. Where I am right now it's Studio A. Studio A is the centerpiece of the entire recording facility we have here in our university. It features a very large control room, which is the room I'm sitting in right now, which features a beautiful SSL AWS 948 console and a variety of outboard gear ranging from LA-2A, the stressor, URA-1176, Manley, and so forth. The room works either in stereo or surround. Other than the control room, which is the brain of our operations, we have a live room and we have a set of discrete booths that you could use at your advantage when it comes to producing. Now, why we have so many rooms? Well, it's pretty easy. Every time we're working in music played by musicians, it's crucial for you to understand in which room the instrument you're about to record will sound best. Therefore, acoustic plays a major role every time we need to record something. Now, as you send to our control room, there is our main live room. The live room features a full drum kit, a set of different guitar amplifiers, a grand piano, and a Nord keyboard. You're going to see yourself as well surrounded by some gobos that we generally use to treat the space, as well as microphone stands of different measures, and the sets of Avium Q system that we use to communicate with artists in different rooms. Adjacent to the main live room, we have three isolated booths. The first one, which could be accessed by our live room, it's our drum booth, or at least how we call it. It's a booth that is designed to record drums and any percussion elements, and the acoustic characteristic is a little bit more dead, so to speak. So in cases you need to record, let's say, uh, a funk project, jazz, or anything that doesn't require a lot of bombasticness and reverberation from the main live room, that's exactly where you want to be. We generally use that room as well to record or to reamp electric guitars or bass guitars. Right next to it, we have a different booth that we also call it the Foley booth. Every time you need to work on a post-production project, that's the place you want to be in. That booth is really nice, has the acoustic changes, we're dealing with a booth with a floating floor and the acoustic is a little bit more live and vibrant. So every time you need to record, let's say, a small percussion ensemble, a brass ensemble, or just instrument that requires just enough reverberation that you could pick up some air moving, that's the booth you want to use. Right next to it, we have our vocal booth, also known as ADR booth. It depends whether you're working in post-production or music. That booth is very much isolated, much more than the other two booths. And it's generally because we want to track vocals with a pristine and very flat sound to then later on apply reverberation and effects. Adjacent, in the middle between the Foley and the ADR booth, there is Studio B, which is a smaller replica of Studio A. It featured three artist control, mixer, 
which can interface with Pro Tools and Logic. And as well, the great thing is that you have a small patch bay that would allow you to get the signal everywhere you want. Now, talking about patch bay, the great thing about this booth is that everything could be picked up from each single space and brought back into our SSL through a patch bay that we have over here, and we're going to talk about it later. Now, how do you get signal from each one of these booths? Well, each booth and each live room features tie lines. A tie line is nonetheless a way that you could use to transfer your source to a destination. In this case, your source is the instrument you're going to be recording into any given room. Your destination, well, your console and your tape machine, or in this case, Pro Tools. Now, the tie lines feature different sets of input and output. The main inputs are mic input. As you can see here, there are different types of numbers that correspond to the same numbers that you're going to find on the patch bay over here in the studio. Now, each single number is properly labeled because organization is key every time you are approaching a project. We're going to be dealing with a variety of cables, microphones, and especially different types of microphones. So we're going to be using from dynamic to tube to condenser to ribbon. So understanding in which microphone input you have plugged in your ribbon microphone is going to save you the stress of blowing that microphone because you will give it a 48 phantom volt. So organization is key. Always come with a notebook. Every time you start a project, it's a good procedure to write down the name of the microphone and the microphone input you plug that microphone in. So that once you're going to be in Studio A and you have to pick up the signal from the patch bay and bring it inside your DAW, you know exactly what to do. And as well, we have a system of Q system. The Q system, as you can see, is represented by Ethernet output ports. As a matter of fact, here in Studio A, we use a system called Avium, which is nonetheless a Q system or a headphone system, if you may, that allow us to transfer signal via Ethernet. Now, why do we use the system? Well, first and foremost, the Avium is automatically patched or normal with the first stereo cue of our SSL. So by turning the cue, by pushing the button and turning it up, you're automatically sending a copy of whatever instrument you have on that channel through the cue. Now, why do we need an Avium? As you can see over here, we have different types of cues. We have two stereo cues and four mono cues. So maybe we want to create a different mix for different artists. So instead of us creating the mix, we can simply output each single instrument to each single channel of the Avium. And as you can see, the Avium features 16 discrete channels. And then the artist, by selecting each single channel, can create his own mix. This is going to save a lot of time from your perspective and from the artist's perspective, which at that point has the best combination and the best blend of the instrument that he or she might want to hear. Along with places where we play music, we also have a brain of the operation, which is our control room. Now, the control room is generally where you're going to find a locker room which hosts only dynamic microphones and as well every cable you might possibly need for a recording session such as XLR cable, TRS cable and as well Ethernet cables for the Avium. Now note each single cable has properly labeled based on its length so once you're done using it please remember to bring it back into the correct space. Along with that we have four huge racks which host a variety of gear from our amplifiers for our main monitors to different patch bays that will connect and reroute different things around our facilities, as well as a black magic service that will let us work with different types of cameras into each different room. And as well, the last rack is where you're going to find our HDX converter, our computer, and our Dante converter. Each single room is connected via Black Magic, which is a device we use to sync all the cameras that you see around here and the big screens that you see around here. Now, why is that? Well, generally speaking, when you're tracking a band, the magic happens when every musician plays along with the rest of the band, right? We don't want to create two aseptic type of recordings. But we also want to take advantage of recording different instruments in separated booths in order to avoid a lot of instrument bleeding. 
So by placing musicians in different booths, we want to be able to still keep an eye contact between them. So we could use our black magic over here and to set it up in a way that each single camera in each single booth will pick it up, the artist that is in that booth, and then we can decide through which monitor, television monitor, we want that person to appear so that everyone stays in sync with whatever is happening within the session. And there you have it. So now you know how a recording studio is made, how everything works. So how about do some recordings?